In my first video, we changed it from this to this. It was a huge upgrade, but there's still room for improvement. And today, we're gonna change it to this. Let's talk about what we didn't like. The original design was a 3D printed pegboard used to hide a modem router setup. It didn't require any screws and you can just wedge it in. The biggest problem was because it didn't have doors, I would constantly have to move the bookcase to access it. The panels were held together by this small pin. It just wasn't strong enough. Knowing these flaws, let's draft a new plan. Okay, so the plan is pretty simple. And the first thing I want to do is I want to create this frame. This idea actually came from the original design. By creating a frame like this, we actually don't need to use any screws. We can just wedge this in because sometime in the future, I could change my mind and maybe I don't want doors on the shelf anymore. Because IKEA furniture is made out of cheap MDF, putting holes really ruins the integrity of the structure and it looks so ugly if you remove the screws. So I'd rather have scratches, if anything, from putting this frame in than holes. Because this is too big to fit in the printer, we'll have to break it down into pieces. And to connect all the pieces, I think it'll be really cool to use dovetail joints, which is really popular in woodworking. We definitely know that we want some kind of like doors. I really want to take advantage of 3D printing and add some print in place hinges. It's something I've always wanted to try. And come on, it's such a cool thing to be able to do. I also want to try to do this with zero supports. I think that's it. Let's go over to Fusion 360 and design it. Okay. Let's take a look at Fusion 360. Here we can kind of see the basic frame of everything. If we take a closer look at the dovetail, we can see that it's a pretty basic shape. I found this type of dovetail in a YouTube video that talks about different woodworking joints in 3D printing. It's actually pretty cool. I'll add it in the description below. Because there's basically three dovetails in this, the friction and the surface area actually makes it pretty strong. So I think this will be great for the middle beams. If we take a look at the print in place hinge, we can see in the cross section analysis that it's actually a cone shape. It's actually able to print smoother and better than having a pole that goes all the way across. At the end of this long tunnel, you can kind of see where the magnet has a 45 degree chamfer at the end. This basically allows it to be exposed as well as if you get the polarity wrong, you can kind of just poke it through to the other side and fix it. And I think that's it. Let's grab the printer and print it up. This is crazy. Huge shout out to the Prusa team for setting this. This video is not sponsored, but I'm honestly just so grateful that brands are reaching out to small creators. After this video, I'll put it in the garage with my other main printer, which is a Bamboo X1C. But come on, I'm kind of excited to open this up here. And they set some supplies. Let's open it up. They include some gummy bears. Nice. Goby. I saw some people getting a fish. I was kind of hoping for that fish. This is absolutely insane. Now I'm not gonna go into an in-depth unboxing or compare it against the bamboo. There's so many other videos by other YouTubers that are way more qualified than I am. But what I will do is point out things that I like and I don't love as we print more and more things. Okay, enough talking. I really wanna print some stuff. Quick change of plans. I just realized that a panel door is slightly bigger than the build plate for the Prusa Core 1. So we're gonna print some iterations on the Bamboo X1C. And then when we do the calyx shelf, I'm gonna print some of those on the core one. With that said, let's print some iterations and fine tune things. I'm not at the point yet where I can get things right on the first print. So I had to go through a few iterations and I just wanna talk about a few things I learned through each iteration. So it's my first time trying to do a print in place hinge. The first one I printed, it just, didn't have enough tolerance. This is the second attempt, works just fine. I then printed a bigger version of it, but then I realized having the hinge in the middle and if you had a lot of weight pulling that it would kind of separate at the top. So as next revision, I decided to add two hinges. This way it kind of counteracts weight from either side and there's very minimal gap. But then I realized you can kind of hear each layer line so I think the tolerance wasn't enough. So I went from this to, which is so cool. 
I then explored different dovetails, it creates more friction and it's just super strong. And that was just a quick rundown of all the learnings from the iterations. You know what they say, if first you don't succeed, just hide all the evidence that you tried. That was a lot louder than I thought it'd be. <laughs> I made a few updates and printed it. Let's go see how they turned out. Okay, I think this is the one. I think I figured out all the kinks and I have a good feeling about this one. Let's put it together. So here are all the pieces. We have four doors and we have four beams. Look at that, it just glides. These are the door handles I made. I kind of wanted to keep the same design language as the pegboard. For these, I just made them a snap fit. There's not much tolerance on the doors for the magnets. I did this on purpose because I didn't want to use glue. I'm going to gently put it in with pliers. Here, I'm just checking the polarity of the magnet before I put it in. Once I place the magnet, I can then just poke it all the way through. All right, all we need to do is wedge it in here. Nice. Fits nice and snug. So for the door handles, I actually changed the color. I also had the idea of putting this on the outside. I think it'll be cool. Just gotta weave it through this door. That's pretty cool. I'd have to say this version is a huge upgrade. I can now access everything super easily. The supports are so much stronger and I gotta try a bunch of techniques I've been wanting to do for a while. These print in place hinges work flawlessly. Look how smooth that is. And these magnets are such a nice touch when they close. Now that this shelf is done, I wanna apply these cabinet doors to the Calyx. And since those shelves are a little smaller, we can finally use the Perusa Court one. All right, cue a cool printing montage. All right, so I just got these out of the printer. They came out pretty clean and pretty much just stock printer settings. You can't really see any layer lines. Let's see how the tolerance worked out. So for all the dovetail tolerances, I did a 0 0.05. It might be different for your printer. Oh, I think that's perfect. I mean, all the tolerances worked out really well. I'm pretty surprised actually. I know I used pyres before, but if you angle it right, you can just put these in with your hands. The cool thing about 3D printing is we're gonna take the cabinet doors from that shell and apply it to this one. But why stop there? Maybe you still want a ventilated, but you don't like the pegboard. Let's say you wanna be classy and you want some slat walls. Or you have a lot of translucent filament laying around. This one I just did for fun. This one is actually an ode to the Prusa Court one. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. Projects like this always remind me why I love 3D printing. You can create one model with endless possibilities. My next upcoming project is upgrading my desk setup. So make sure you're subscribed to get notified when that video drops. I also did a Wi-Fi signal test. So if you're interested, stick around after the outro for the results. Thanks again for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. So the modem and the router are on the floor right now. I wanna test the temperature before I put in the shelf and then I also want to do it after. And I'm also going to run a few speed tests. So before I put it in the shelf, it's going to be. So to test the internet connection, we're going to run the test in two locations. And in each location, we're going to run it three times. The first location is going to be in my office, which is the closest to the router. And the second location will be in the dining room, which is downstairs furthest away from the router. Now I'm going to test the temperature of the modem and router after it's been sitting here for a few days. And here are the results. 
After running the speed test, we can see that the change was less than 9%, which is practically negligible for everyday use. Internet tests are also pretty all over the place. If we ran this 20 more times, I think it would have been pretty even. Here are the results for the change in temperature. The increase was minimal. I checked the manufacturing website and they recommended operating ranges from 32 to 95 degrees. So no worries there. After looking at these results, I think it's safe to say that putting inside a bookcase has minimal to no effect on your modem router setup. I hope this was helpful. Please let me know if you have any more questions. And thanks again for watching.